Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of my 190 feet 12 project. So, if, it's, if, if this is your first video of the project, look at the right corner for you. It's my logo, go to the playlist, you can see the rest of this project. So, what I'm going to do in this video. Um, I got the engine for the last time in the engine stand. So, I did some wiring already. So this video will be about uh, some engine wiring, put the engine back in the car for the last time before it's going to run. So this will pretty much, that's pretty much it. But it's uh, very fast to say, but a lot of work. So what I did already is because I got some wiring in the back of the engine that I cannot reach when the engine is in there. So uh, I started here with uh, the throttle position sensor rewired it because everything has to go to that side because the in the engine bay on the passenger side will be the ECU so rewired this one uh, two knock sensors this is the only two sensors that I really cannot reach when the engine is in the car so if something is with that I'm in pretty big trouble so I'll look if I got a light as you can see those two sensors are wired up. One over there, one over there. So, connected it. Also got the uh, both uh, cam uh, crankshaft position sensors in. I only have to use one, but these ones are also very hard to reach. I don't say it's impossible, but uh, yeah. I also leave them both in because of that. So these are the original uh, crank uh, position sensor. So I cut off the original connector because this is normally connected on the original wiring loom. I'm going to use this. So how does this sensor work? It has a... I marked this one because this is for uh, this cylinder bank. So this is the one I'm going to use first. So if, if you can see inside the green wire that's the the positive signal and the ground signal is this so I will just rewire it and then going into the ECU so these ones are also I think they are long enough to reach completely to the ECU I hope because so this one these ones will have a different routing than the normal wiring loom because uh, I want to build it like that it's, it's also if you have to uh, remove the engine in the, in the future that it's it's easy to remove I think uh, on a lot of cars that's almost always the issue it's like an engineering fact somebody thinks of something behind a desk and the guy that has to do it is in trouble so I don't want to do that so the plan with for example these two uh, crank position wires and I will get a manifold vacuum line that also goes to the ECU. So this, I'll show you the ECU in a minute. This ECU has a uh, map sensor on the ECU. So it will not be screwed in here. So uh, if you look in the engine bay, like the crank position sensors will be over here. And the vacuum line will be over here somewhere. So I will drill a hole somewhere here uh, with a rubber. It will get a rubber or something that goes through and that's the shortest way because I will route a connector to the firewall over here in the back and then go behind the dashboard and underneath the dashboard will be my ECU so these wires will be then long enough I think so <coughs> this is all connected also my intake air temperature sensor is connected also put the wires in there they're going into the loom so I really like to use this kind of sleeve it's a uh, this is uh, this hose of this sleeve is pretty temperature resistant so I use automotive uh, automotive wires so most of them are 0 0.5 millimeters and uh, I got for different different sensors different kind of wires so every sensor has its own ground Going back to the ECU, that's the best. Uh, in the past, with older cars, sometimes you had a ground signal through the engine, but that is just, yeah, uh, that's not the best. I can show you some issue 
what we had in some senses, if, for example, you have an uh, oil temp sensor for this this Mercedes's oil temperatures and, uh, for example, like this sensor, the one pin, <coughs> this is for the dashboard on uh, on a Mercedes. So it shows you the coolant temperature. But for, you got the same kind of sensor. I don't know if I still have it laying around here like this. This is an oil pressure sensor. Look on these later engines, you've got two pins. So there's also going to be a ground back to the dashboard. So with this sensor, if you if you put it on uh, on ignition, I have in another car already a half a bar oil pressure because I got a ground failure. So it will not give you the uh, zero zero bars when you just when the engine is out. You cannot see a half bar of oil pressure because it's not there. Because you have a ground signal going through the engine, that's just a fault. So that's why you want to have the ground wide back as close as possible to the uh, ECU. Because you don't want any faults in it. So, the ECU. So I'm going to use FEMS. Because it's just, an, uh, I think the price quality is, I, is pretty good. <coughs> um, this engine of this ECU can uh, control up to eight uh, separate ignition signals and injection signals, so uh, sequential, so per uh, per cylinder. I have a 12 cylinder, so I'm going to use six inputs and six uh, inputs for ignition and six inputs for uh, uh, injection. So it will be per two cylinders. So because it's not for 12 cylinders made sequentially, this one. So that's good enough. So these, uh, this ECU FEMS, I think the original is from Hungary. Um, the company that I work with is uh, DayPayEngineering.nl. Why I choose this company is because they are the dealer of FEMS. And this company has already uh, uh, got a V12 engine running on this ECU. So it's completely the same engine, only this, that engine that, that the other guy is running is in uh, W126, also pretty cool. So uh, this company has already uh, mapped an engine like this, so that's pretty good and they can deliver me a, a good startup program for this engine. And it's just, uh, it's, an, it's a company with a lot of experience, so don't hesitate to have a look on this website, they pay engineering.nl. So this ECU will be mounted under the dash. So as you can see also here, this is the input for the uh, map sensor that's inside. So I'm only going to use these two connectors. So for this is for extra uh, auxiliary inputs. I don't need that, so that's why there's already the connector without any inputs in it. So um, to show you some, uh, the most uh, most uh, uh, sensors are all going to route through this big connector. The NOx sensor and the lambda sensors are into this connector, so the rest will be here. So it will be wired. So like this, this is my my schedule how it should be wired. So I have two lambda sensors, two NOx sensors. It can all be connected. <coughs> so the ECU will be under the dash. I hope it's it's a little bit to see. So it will be mounted here. I will be making a plane in here. So it will go to the dash and then down and I can connect it in there. So that is the plan. So the plan for now is first because I got the uh, wiring of the back side of the engine is already in. So to get the transmission connected that's underneath there, transmission, and uh, of course the of course I have to get the uh, torque converter, uh, get new oil in it as much as possible, so I don't have to fill it up later on. Or if I go to start the engine, that uh, the pump in the transmission needs to pump it completely full. So uh, how I'm going to do that is just uh, fill it up, put it in. The engine will be uh, get an angle because it has to go in, so oil will run out of it into the transmission, but it's not really a problem. So when it's in there, I have to look up uh, how much uh, oil I have to put in before starting, but they, it's not really a problem that they run a little bit low uh, oil because 
that's also how you do it when you change uh, all the transmission oil. So, but I will try to fill it up as much as possible, like the coolers and that sort of stuff. Just fill it up by hand. I'm also going to do it with the oil cooler. Just uh, uh, put one connection in and the other one out, and just fill up the pipe till the oil cooler is completely filled up. I will do the same with the uh, with the steering pump. Also, try to fill it up as much as possible. Uh, engine is all still empty, so I have to fill it up with oil completely, including the cooler, of course. So uh, that is the plan for now to get everything in. I'm still waiting for uh, a bearing or a bearing housing. That's the housing of my. Uh, I don't know where it's laying down there from the central uh, axle, the drive shaft from the transmission to the differential. In the center, there is a bearing. I want to change it out. I have the new bearing, but there's a housing with a rubber uh, mounting around it, and that mounting is, is screwed into the housing under the uh, car. And that housing is, uh, yeah, there's a back delivery from Mercedes. I already tried to get it for a half year now, and still, uh, they need to make it. Still, it's you don't get, you can't get it anywhere else. So it's pretty weird. Also, aftermarket, uh, you can't not get the uh, the bearing. So it's a W124 part number. So uh, we will see if we if I can get it. It's still the old bearing is still in it, but it's not uh, it's not broken, but it's also not a new one. So I can drive with it, but I think it will give some noise, maybe. And the, the bad thing about it is I have to get the exhaust in the car away, and also the axle. Uh, so it's still a few hours of work if I get the bearing later on. So we will see. So I'm going to start with uh, <coughs> get all the vacuum connections, check everything, because I got some connections open like this. Not going to use this anymore. So this will all be. And this one I'm going to use. There's another one here. I'm not going to use. All those connections were from the uh, from the solenoids that were used from the uh, exhaust re uh, back regulation. So EGR and that sort of stuff, emission stuff. So I'm not going to use like this one. This is also from the emission thing. And I don't know where these two were from, but not sure. This is also one. I don't know where it is for. I'm going to only use this one. Have a look uh, for the rest. So there's a pipe from here to this side. This is for to get the, the same kind of vacuum and overpressure. There's no over. Is there's overpressure? It's pretty good, but there's no. So it will be vacuum uh, pressure uh, the same on both uh, intake manifolds. So that's where I'm at right now. So. Let's start. So, two days later, a little bit frustrated, but uh, I will show you what happened. So, two rings here. I will first show you why they are here. I put the engine over here, got all the wiring on the back done like I already showed you. And you can see a part of my flywheel is missing. So, on this engine you can bolt it off. So, what... Uh, I discovered is when I put it here, we want to put the transmission on that I had not the right flywheel for an aftermarket ECU because this is this is what I had. This one is bolted on, has only three pickup points. Guys that have Mercedes will know this kind of pickup uh, for the crankshaft, and they are on it for an engine with this angle, so it's different than a V8. Of course, the pickup point is a little bit different. What I needed, what I wanted to see is this. I always thought I had this, but I've never looked because the engine was, when I was looking for something like this, the engine was bolted onto the transmission and in the car. So, yeah, <clears throat> I didn't have it. So I looked on the internet, tried to find a flywheel for M1 20V12 with this pickup thing. I, I, I think this is from off 1995 when I'm going to run this engine with a single ECU. But it was not on it, so I uh, tried to find it online. Mercedes is not selling this flywheel anymore for a V12, also not for a V8. <coughs> so it's pretty stupid, I think. Uh, new, they would cost about 200 euros, which I think is a good price to overcome the problem to change them out. So if you have a broken starter ring, this one is a one piece, so you cannot change it, so you just need a ring. So in the beginning they bolted on with three bolts. 
then the other bolts will go through so you got uh, nine bolts that holding on the torque converter and uh, the starter ring to the flex plate that's over here so the later models were uh, with uh, a dowel pin so I remove the top and uh, just uh, with a hammer I uh, made it loose because uh, the flex plate is bolted on with 12.9 bolts. The bolt that I got with it was 10.9. I thought there were 35 newton meters in a 90 degrees angle. I don't want, normally I should buy new bolts, but I would not take the risk of taking these out and seeing that they are too long and still have to wait another week or two for bolts. So I did it in a different way. Um, so if you have the same problem, you want to have a run, have uh, a V12 or a V8 or any Mercedes running on aftermarket ECU, you should get a flywheel like this. So this one is from a V8. This came from a 5 liter M119 engine. So there are different numbers you could find, but uh, yeah, it's from a later model. If you, you, you will still see the picture like this in a manual. But it is like this. So try to look up the numbers if you're looking for something like this. Because I get this tip from a guy in the UK, Rensportfactory.com. Makes very nice flywheels. So I thought, I'm fucked. I have to let uh, them make me a new flywheel. But he said, a V8 should be the same size. And it is. It's perfectly the same size. The distance is the same. The pickup is the same. Only this is different. And on a V8, the starting point for a slender one is on a different position but on an aftermarket ECU that you don't need it because you can calibrate it that's what my tuner tells me so he says just put it on and you have to calibrate it and tell him what is uh, the point to start so that's up to that point so I also did some wiring and I got my ECU up there also got my fuse box over there, all the relays, all the wiring is in up till the point I can do do that. So also uh, got this wire soldered in the main wire so everything gets 12 volts up to there. And then this is the wire for my ignition that will put power on everything. So this morning I wanted to put the, put the fuel pump on. Yeah, of course, I was already a little bit frustrated. And a lot of people, I think, will not show you when something goes wrong. So what I did, made a wiring for the fuel pump. Frustrated about the flywheel. Got a very small bolt. Look what I did. Brand new fuel pump. Put the bolt on, and I think it's M4 or something. Too tight and broke off. Fucking hell. So, I already bought a new fuel pump. But uh, this is how to, sh to show you how you should not do it, I think. I think it's just uh, bad luck, maybe. I think more people will uh, have this. Maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one. But the wiring for the fuel pump is in. I bought a new fuel pump. I think it's possible to put the nut back on on the back, I think, uh, but I just tightened it too much. I think it's my own fault. So uh, this fuel pump can go in the scrap bin or somebody uh, maybe has a solution, but I don't think you can change this pin for a new one. If somebody has an idea, if I should throw it away or maybe can fix it, let me know. So I just bought a new fuel pump. This is a uh, DSL. 392 255 liters 5 bar fuel pump so I just bought a new one uh, they are yeah not that price that high so it's pretty good to do so I think the pump cost me 110 euros but yeah it's 110 euros that not had to happen so so what I'm going to do now is uh, clean this a little bit off all the surface rust should be going off and then uh, put this on with the three bolts I think these are uh, on 8 Nm or something just to center it and uh, I think it's uh, I'm pretty lucky that this I bought this for I thought 130, 130 euros so it's cheaper than the new one and um, so we will see 
I think it's uh, pretty nice that I have the part now. So then the next thing is I cleaned also the torque converter. Or torque converter I put the oil out of it. Poured it in so it's half full like this in here with oil. And I can put the transmission on. And then when it's under the car I can screw down the torque converter to the, uh, to the plate. With my new ring in between and then put it in, in there and start with the wiring of the, of the engine. So it's all, uh, I also got everything in there wired up nice and tightly so my electrical motor is still hanging here because I need to put the ECU in. So for the rest, looking good. So going to the next step. So our engine is in. <coughs> Put the engine transmission together with a new flywheel. Um, put it back in. There were some parts that I not sure that it, if it would fit or not. So, for example, on the back side, you got that uh, that pipe running, and if you can see it, it's down. That small tubing goes on the back. That's uh, going to the to the breeder. That's going inside. So I did not know for sure if it would fit. But it fits all pretty good, so also on this side, also with getting the engine in, it's very tight. So, um, but it worked out pretty good. Also with this, it, it, this space is, all, is pretty small, but this engine would not move a lot in the car. Also with this sensor, I've never tested this, because uh, the engine was out, it was not on the piping when I uh, got the sensor. So uh, it all fits pretty good. I also got the... Uh, also got the uh, ignition uh, coils on it, put the wire on it to the center, so that works all pretty good. The only thing I need to do is wire up this to the ECU. Also on the other side is pretty close, but it works all pretty good. If you look, looks all nice. So it all fits just. So the, um, also got the uh, everything under the car mounted. The only thing I still need to do is the is the steering rack is in, but the connection to the to the steering axle to the steering wheel. I'll show you underneath the car. So got the car up. Got the, everything in here. It's all mounted. You can see the steering box is in. I also modified the lid because in the beginning I had some rings underneath here, so I welded. And this is just a tubing, I think. Three or three millimeters, three mil or four mil thick. So I welded the solid uh, bushing in it, so it's more solid. It's easier to uh, get it on position. So in the beginning, when I turned on uh, the nut to torque spec, it will deform this this piece. So and also, you can see here it's flat, and here's about uh, three three millimeters difference because this one was not completely uh, level. So there was some difference in the frame, but yeah, that's almost impossible to get it perfect without any laser laser alignment on your chassis or anything else. So it's now completely good. I got everywhere is enough room. So it all fits pretty good. I got to start the motor in. The only uh, shitty thing is uh, this bolt uh, I can, and this one. I cannot get it on torque spec. It needs to go to 38 Newton meters. But yeah, uh, my uh, my feeling is uh, pretty good by hand, so uh, I put it the best way. So you can see here how much space I got in here. So it's not not in, not uh, a lot, but it's enough because this engine is on s in pretty solid mount, so it will not move. I think it will move a few millimeters, but not more than that. So it's all good. Also, the hole that I cut in the in the side for the cable. You can see it's in here. I will need to put the rubber in it because the, I have to audit it. There's also going to be uh, the cable for the starter motor will go through this hole. So I need to order that uh, rubber. I know the dimensions of that one, so that's pretty good. I thought it's 44 millimeters. I already found one. So all the spaces are pretty good. You can see around the transmission. It's all nice. It's easy to see now because it's now an aluminium uh, color. So I got space everywhere, so it's pretty good. So airflow can go through it when I'm driving. So only on this side, uh, this coupling needs to be connected. But I have uh, got a guy on the internet that gave me a very good tip. I ordered this. So this is a heat jacket. 
So I also ordered it for my oil lines. So this will uh, protect uh, my st steering axle uh, from the end to the top. I have to have a look how I'm going to wrap it around it. Also the downpipes will be wrapped in. So for the rest I got the axle in. It's all on torque. It's all on torque spec. All the bolts are on torque spec. So uh, also the center. This is on torque spec. I checked uh, these bolts if they are on torque spec. I changed uh, the plates and I need the subframe. I had new ones. Also did that. So also what I also not did yet was the nut for the drive shaft. I put it on. It was pretty weird because I got different, uh, two different kind of nuts. I don't know why because these axles are from the S600. And I got nuts from M24 uh, thread. And this, this is M22, so it's pretty weird. So uh, I don't know why, but I had also those both sizes. So it's pretty weird that you got two different sizes. So got the wheels back on spec, but also it's pretty weird. Some people saying you have to talk these bolts to 130 to 140 newton meters. I think it's pretty weird because it's 10.9 bolts and 12. They go on spec for 122 newton meters, so you should over talk them. So I think it's pretty weird. So if you have an uh, opinion about that, please leave a comment below the video about talk spec on wheels. I think that's a very nice discussion to have because M14 is 194 newton meters. I should say, yeah, those, those will go to uh, 140 or 130 newton meters. This is M12, so I uh, normally it's 122.9 newton meters or something for M12. So I also did that spec. So it's all pretty nice, everything fits. So uh, I should, uh, the only thing I need to modify is the, or modify, I have to make two, uh, I will have two bolts on on each side for the ladder sander. Um, so uh, the AFR sensor. So it needs to go in. Those will be somewhere here. So I have to make a hole that they go into the car on both sides. I need to look to that, but first I'm going to do the engine wiring. So let's show you the bolts from the drive shaft. I, mean, I think it's pretty weird. So I got this bolt in this size. So it's pretty weird, it's two different sizes. So this is just over M25 inner fret. So this should be, I don't know what size it is. I think it's M28 and this is M26. So it's pretty weird. I got those nuts, these nuts, with, uh, and I got the same. The one is uh, 36, and this is 32 uh, size. So I think it's pretty weird. But I put uh, those, my own, uh, I got two new ones, I put them in. That's well fit. So that's pretty good. So, and these ones are even smaller. This is smaller. This is from a different axle, this is from 124. And these, I think, this is a different size. So this is about M24. So M24, M26, M28, I think it's pretty weird. Okay, I will go low in the car. The next thing I what I'm going to do is um, going to wire up the engine on top uh, from one side. And then I'm going to do the other side with the fans and that sort of stuff. I'm missing some colors of wiring after I sort it out. So that's the next thing what I'm going to do. So at the moment I'm busy with the wiring of the injectors. So I'll just show you a little bit how it works. So I have all everything laid out. So the red one is uh, positive to all the injectors. And all the colors will be put to ground by the ECU. So that's how it works. So all the injectors get a 12 volt uh, positive uh, power supply and then uh, the signal is getting, it is from the ECU or it's the signal, the ECU puts it to a ground and then you get an o and then will be open for some kind of milliseconds. So that's how it works. So uh, with these connectors you got a rubber, a rubber and then in the front it's just your wire strips 
and then I just use these kind of connectors you get with it. So the back side is bigger, it will be pushed over the rubber, and then the smaller side on the front, that's where your wire goes. So it looks like this when it's uh, been put on there. So it's pretty easy, then you push it in the connector, you hold a small click, and that's it. Pretty easy to do. So I use these kind of pliers. It works pretty good. I got this from eBay, pretty cheap. I think it's 50 euros. It's a pretty. I think the quality is pretty good. If you use this every day, I think it's not the way to go. Maybe I think this will this will slide or uh, get worn out or anything else. It works pretty good for now. So uh, yeah. It makes nice connections, so that's pretty good. So, um, when this is in the car, I have to put another uh, wire in here in the front. This, this is like the front of the engine, this is where the flywheel is. So I work the way around, and there will be my coolant sensors and that sort of stuff will be in there. And then ignition on one side, going back to the ECU. So, here, this will be like this in here. I don't think I'm going to put some cover over it because it's easier to... You don't see it when the cover is on it, because you cannot see the uh, injectors. Yeah, you have to look very good in, in between, but I think it's easier to have the wires like this if you are uh, going to search in the future for electrical issue or anything else. You can never see the color, so I think that's easier. It's not really in your view. So over this, there's going to be a cover over it, so you don't see it. It, it will all be wrapped up nice and tidy. So uh, that's how I'm doing it. So. Let's go on. So, got some work done. Um, let's show you how much wiring I have done at this point. So, I've got the uh, engine wiring loom from the injectors. Got it all in. Everything is connected. In here it's all connected. Uh, wired in the, the blink fluid temperature sensor. Uh, that's in, it's all right in. So what I did different than the original one, normally the wiring loom is uh, coming from the front here and going in here, going off away. But yeah, I have uh, a plate in here that goes out and then if the wiring loom is going through there, it's just annoying, I think. So I did a different job with it. So I wired up all everything to the front till here and wired up on the side, just like the ignition uh, wire from the ignition coil is going to the distributor caps. So on the other side I've got the same thing, but uh, the only thing that will be wired from this side is the uh, the wire to this one, that's the green one, that's over here. So this is the original wiring that's going to the dash. This is the temperature from my uh, temperature gauge in my dashboard. So on this sensor is from the engine ECU. So the rest of the wiring that I've got here, this will be for my ventilators. Two fans will be controlled by two different uh, relays that will be controlled. Uh, I've got some, the other one, I've got one wiring for the power supply to the, this, I got a new sensor for this, but this is the cooler for the uh, automatic transmission uh, oil. That is a sensor in it and that will shift. And I got another wire for my oil pressure sensor that will be over there, down there. You can see, you can see that good with uh, everything. But this wire is going to the back, in the front, also in there. So I ordered uh, original uh, rubbers. This original rubber is, normally you cannot get it. Um, <coughs> this is an... Uh, original rubber, look, it's an original style rubber. What I did, I have found a website website when I'm looking on eBay that's uh, ersatzteile24.de and I ordered original style I don't know where I leave them, original style rubbers it's pretty nice if you look to this rubber these rubbers are not available from a dealer anymore they don't make them anymore but this company makes the same kind of rubber same sizes so I, I looked on the website it's all original style rubbers that's the same thing what I now did um, over here with the engine bay with my fuel fuel lines that go through there I have used original style rubbers 
So that's pretty nice. So in, uh, inside, all the wires for my ECU are now in there. It's a, so I've got the. Uh, have a look at this. Is my all my injector wires? I measured them all through. Uh, this is the wiring that comes from my from the other side. So this is uh, cooling. Uh, a cooling su uh, supply for the uh, automatic transmission and oil pressure and that sort of stuff. So everything is in here now. So the only thing I need to do is the wiring up to the to the ECU. Uh, the only thing that I need to wire to the ECU is the two lambda sonders. But I first have to put the uh, exhaust underneath the car. So I'm getting there, but it's all small things that you need to do. So and everything needs to fit. And needs to be pretty clean. So the original rubber will be in here to supply uh, supply all the wiring, and it's all nice and tidy. And if everything is okay, because I got also now the fuel lines connected, that sort of stuff. I will bolt those things already in if I tested everything, and that everything is uh, leak-free, like fuel lines and that sort of stuff. So. All sensors are now connected, but before I'm going to test all the connections, uh, everything will be off the sensors because you don't want to have an uh, injector that's going to flow. You don't want it, but yeah, if everything is connected uh, good, that should not be needed, but I just do, do it like that. So that's how far I'm right now. So I think I'm about, uh, let's say, 80% of the wiring is done. Uh, I have some stuff to install from the original wiring and uh, just normally I show you more in the video and do something but yeah I need to have my mind uh, closely on what I'm doing otherwise I'm forgetting something so uh, yeah that's it so the next thing what I'm going to do is uh, finish up the all the original wiring and put the radiator in there and then uh, try to mount uh, everything and get cooling fluid in it and that sort of stuff and wire up the last things. So I also got the starter motor uh, fixed and I also have to install like this wire. Have a look where it is. This is the original uh, connection from the ignition key to the starter. So this will uh, put the uh, uh, relay in the on the starter motor to uh, get the starter motor running. That sort of stuff is all the kinds of things I need to do. It needs to be pretty tidy because this is just, it's too short this wire and it needs to go to the other side on the bottom. So I have to have a look I'm going to how I'm going to do that. So I'm getting there. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions about this video or this project, don't hesitate to ask. And the right corner of you with my logo. Uh, you can click on it, you can go to my main page, see the complete playlist. And uh, if you like it, subscribe. It would be pretty nice. So it will not take pretty long for this car will be running. And I think it will be pretty cool. So thanks for watching and see you for the next video. Bye-bye.